All right, what's going on? Welcome to Insight with Irv. For those of you guys that are in the service industry, service-based industries, this is a special episode for you. I want to speak to those of us that are going from zero to our first quarter million dollars. And again, this is specifically for those of us that are service-based. Now, a lot of the examples that I'll give you will most likely be for those that are maybe education-based, information-based, so if you are maybe a tax company, if you are maybe a financial advisor, if you sell life insurance, if you are a content creator that's trying to maybe bring in some revenue outside of ads, you guys know how I feel about that, right? I'm not the biggest fan of that as your only source of income, then this episode is going to be for you. Now, can you take this if maybe you're in a construction company or if maybe you are a service based like a landscaping company? Yeah, you can. But again, for the most part, full caveat, this is more for those of us that deal in like knowledge type of work. And so why do I like service-based businesses? Well, first of all, I'm involved in the service-based business. And one of the reasons why I like it, which I actually have three here, but the main one is you can build out different divisions. Now, this is something that took me a little, you know, a little while to figure out. Here's what that means. If you are, and I was going back and forth with this, uh, with a friend of mine on this, but if you are a maybe content creator, I use that example because this, this conversation actually sparked from me speaking to a content creator. If you're a content creator and maybe you just sell DIY kits or maybe you just sell courses, that's cool. Like I came from that world. I, I, I get it, right? There's a time and a place for it. You can put it on autopilot where you can sell kits. But I think taking it a step further is that you can't necessarily build out different divisions beyond of where that product is. What that means is you don't necessarily have the bandwidth or you know enough in terms of info to sell where now you have a coach set up in place. You don't have enough info to sell where now you have maybe an agency that's maybe helping clients run their ads for them within the business. Maybe if you're just selling a course, uh, you constantly have to readjust the information that's in there because number one, people are either biting chunks off of it and then they're just repackaging it and reselling it, which sucks because then it becomes commoditized. Or second, you end it, you end up getting it pirated, which I've had that before, especially in the lower ticket space. It's very common where someone, you know, spam account buys the product and then it ends up on a website all over Google. Like I see that all the time with people. There's really no way of preventing that. Uh, one of the ways that you can prevent that though is through service because in the service, people have to deal with you directly, either face to face, over the phone, on Zoom. So it's a actual human to human experience and cowards that are usually pirating stuff. They're not going to actually jump on a call with you or your team. They're just going to rip it and then either charge back or just rip it and then, you know, put it all over, all over the uh, internet and then charge. If you were selling it for like a hundred bucks and I'm, I'm speaking from experience, you're charging a hundred bucks for it. They'll sell it for like 10 bucks as an example. That's I'm giving you worst case scenarios. But the reason why I like service based businesses is because it naturally builds a moat around your company and around you, the brand, which makes you more competitive and keeps you less commoditized in a crowded market. Number two, which I kind of touched on, it's, it's it's hard to copy. So if you're doing a service-based business, someone would literally have to hire you, see your processes, see how you think through your frameworks, see how you think through problems, and then see how you deliver a solution. And the cool thing about service-based businesses is that especially depending on what you're offering. So I'll use the example of a tax company is that every year your client's going to come back, especially if you pick the right type of clients. And in my opinion, the right type of clients, if you have a tax company, if it's like you're doing bookkeeping. So if you have someone that just got an LLC, that means that every quarter they have to, you have to, they have to pretty much check in with you to make sure that they have their filings in place every year. They have to check in with you to make sure that all their fees, franchise fees, taxes on the personal side and on the business side is up to date. The cool thing about that is that at every level, they're going to check back in with you because it's changing at every level. So they first open up their LLC. Guess what? They hire you the first year to help them file their books. But guess what happens? Year number two is they say, wait a minute, my business did pretty well in income. And so I hired my first contractor and my first employee. I don't know how to do this. So guess what? They say, okay, let me come back to you again so that you can help me out with this. So you file their taxes again. But guess what happens on year three? Their business does even better. And so now they come back to you hey, I'm looking for some for some deductions so that I can continue to maybe lower my tax bill. So you see where we're going with this? So the same thing happens in the service-based business, which you can't necessarily do with a course, which means that it's far, uh, it's, it's more difficult to copy 
versus them actually being in there, understanding the SOPs, understanding the process, and then trying to reverse engineer it. So the golden, I say the golden ticket to this, it's even if somebody was going, going to copy you, and I learned this actually from a teacher of mine, even if somebody's going to copy you, once it breaks, they don't know how to fix it. So shout out to Mr. Chambers on that. Give me that lesson back in high school. Uh, number three is you can change or you can charge way more if you do what I'm about to mention next. So in service-based businesses, it's a skill set. It's a high level skill set that people will pay a lot of money for. And so I was actually I was actually talking to my team about this. If you have a high level skill set in the service based industry or in a service based uh, business, rather, you're able to charge more money for that than, say, again, if you were just selling like a one off product. And the important thing to know about that is even if you feel like someone knows more about you because they, quote unquote, make more money. Again, I was talking to my team about this this morning is just because somebody makes more money than you doesn't necessarily mean that they don't need your help or need your service. I'll give you an example. How many millionaires and billionaires hire personal trainers? A lot of them, right? Even though they most likely already know what to do. You eat less, you move more if you're looking to lose some fat, and then you eat more and you lift more if you're looking to put on some muscle. Like, that's it. But even though these millionaires, again, if we're using that context, make way more money than a personal trainer, because personal trainers, especially the majority of them, they don't really make a lot of money between us. I, I speak to a couple of them, so they tell me what they make. A lot of them are struggling, unfortunately. They still get hired to work with these people, even though, again, they make far more money than, than them because they want the accountability, which is like the other side of service-based businesses is that people often hire you for accountability. They often hire you for risk mitigation, meaning they don't want to risk doing it wrong, even if they kind of have an idea of doing it themselves. And then lastly, you can help them save more time. Now that we have that out the way, I want to give you what I got. One, two, three, four different, I'd say pieces of, I'd say two, pieces to the puzzle that I've used. And I'm not just giving you, you know, numbers that I kind of pulled out of my head. No, no, like I've been down that path of 250, right? So I, I, I have a clear understanding of how to go from zero to 250. And so I hope to impart that over to you. So the first thing that you want to do is, and again, I'm giving you everything that I've done, is take uh, take free calls, do free sessions. This is going to do a couple of things for you. You're going to learn more about the problem, the person, and your solution. Again, you're going to learn more about the problem that the person has, the actual person, meaning the client that you're looking to service, and then your product or your service for the information, the software, um, the expertise that you're selling. And so can you do this out the gate without giving stuff away for free? I hear that all the time. Irv, like, do I really have to like slave work? Trust me, it's not slave work. Like the longer you hold on to, to that mentality, the slower you're going to move. If you want to move faster, give stuff away for free. If you don't feel com comfortable giving something away for free because it's actually going to cost you a little bit more to maybe justify, then give it at a discount where you're just breaking even, right? You're like, you're not really turning a profit on it. But you're again, you're getting paid to learn if you think about it. So even if you're giving something away for free, you're still getting paid to learn because you're getting feedback that's priceless. These companies like Amazon, Apple, um, Best Buy, all these companies, Sony, they're constantly spending millions of dollars on R&D, research and development. And so they're paying to be surveyed. They're paying, hey, when you go to a restaurant, hey, can you tell us how we did today? Like, you know, how fast did we get to your table? How did we greet you? Did, were you waiting for a long time? They want to know how we're doing so that we can continue to make the product better. They're not just giving you a survey just to give you a survey. They, they want to make the product better. So it's the same thing here. So when you give something to someone away for free, the cool thing about this is that it's less, uh, it puts less pressure on you, the small business owner, the entrepreneur that's still kind of figuring things out because it can be a little bit scary. And so you can go back to the person, hey, I, I know I gave this away for you for free. Only thing that I should return is like, just tell me how I'm doing, right? Just tell me like, rip the bandaid off. How bad was it? Was it slow? Did it suck? Uh, could, could we have maybe helped you in this area? Like, tell me exactly. So you're going to get that feedback. And the cool thing about it is no one's going to be more honest to you than a paying customer or than a customer. I can tell you, sometimes it's brutal. Clients can be brutal. They can tell you, dude, this flat out sucks. Or I was expecting way more. And you just have to take it on the chin sometimes. You have to say, you know, gulp. Okay, cool. I appreciate that feedback. 
uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how we can continue to improve. So that's the first area. Give it away for free or give it away at a discount. The second thing that I want you to consider is, and again, you can stack all of these or you can kind of chunk down and do them piece by piece. But the second thing that I want you to consider is um, once you offer your stuff for free, then offer it at a discount. Once you offer it at a discount, then offer it at a full price. And then bonus, once you offer it at a full price, then offer it at a premium. Now, we can kind of digest the first two, right? Okay, we're going from free to discounted. We, we all know what that means, right? Discounted to full price, I'll kind of deep, you know take a deeper dive into that. What that means is if what you really want to set up for is 200 bucks, you have it a bit more doubt in your service. So let's say you sell $200 an hour packages to jump on a call with you, do maybe a website underwrite where you're taking a look at someone's website and then you're kind of grading it, letting them know, okay, these are some hooks that we can change on your website. This is maybe something that we can fix to help with the retention. That's 200 bucks. So you go from selling your hour from, let's say, 50 bucks an hour to 200, right? Or from free to 50, discounted, from $50 to $200, that's full price. Now, if you're wondering, okay, dude, I get that. Free, discount, full price. But what does it mean to go from full price to premium? Isn't that the same thing? No. Here's what that means. Every now and again, you're going to get clients that are going to want you to do more for them and they're going to want to go deeper with you. And so if what you usually sell, maybe again, using the example of a web developer or someone who's helping out with websites is the $200 an hour consultations, you're probably going to get someone that wants more premium service. What that means is they're maybe going to want to have you in their back pocket where maybe they can slack you, uh, they can WhatsApp you, they can hit you up on Telegram or even just call you an extra 30 minutes a week, right? And so anytime during the week, hey, I want to have like a token that I can use to call you and be able to speak with you. And so with someone like that, you can maybe offer a package where it's maybe a thousand bucks a month so that they kind of have you in their back pocket and then they can contact you, they can text you, they can call you off the books so they don't always have to book a call with you. Some people are going to take that. And so if you do the math on the 200, that's equivalent to somebody booking five one-on-ones with you, right? For just one time, which is at a, at a thousand bucks. And again, the cool thing about clients that pay more is they usually end up paying more for more stuff later on on the road. So those are typically the clients that are going to help you scale the uh, the lifetime value of that ticket, so the LTV, and that's going to increase the amount of money that you're bringing in. So the more of them that you can get on the back end, the more it's going to help with you on the front end with bringing in more customers. Just a little pro tip on you for that. Uh, number three is post content on when you're on what you're helping clients with. I remember I was on YouTube the other day and I was looking at how to change an oil, like how to change the oil on my car for whatever reason. I'm not a car guy, right? And so I'm like, you know what? How hard can it be? And so I came across this channel. The guy does, I forget the name of it, but the guy does like basic things like how to change a doorknob, how to change a kitchen sink, how to change an oil, how to fix a garage or like basic stuff around the house. And I'm over here looking at it. It was like a 35 minute video and I'm over here thinking, okay, wait a minute. This is 35 minutes of this guy fixing stuff. He knows what the heck he's doing. I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. Like I appreciate him putting that content out there, but there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to do this. So I noticed that he offered a service like on his YouTube, but the thing was, is that it was out of my area. So I obviously couldn't hire him, but I want you to think of if you offered a service for people throughout the country, then that naturally would be an ideal uh, lead magnet for you right now. It doesn't have to be something where it's, 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 it's national. You can still make a lot of money if it's just national clients, right. Or, uh, uh, local clients rather. So I saw that and I was thinking, man, I wonder how many people thought exactly what I thought. Okay. Cool video. This guy seems like he knows what he's doing. I'd rather call him to do this thing for me because I, I'm not going to screw this up. Like I don't want to screw this up. And so you multiply that by however many eyeballs he's getting and hence, which is why he's constantly putting out different videos across maybe different things that he helps with. He's a handyman. And so again, put yourself in his shoes of maybe something that you can work on or something that you can post. Again, I like the idea of posting conversations, which kind of kind of ties back in to the first piece. So if you're already thinking outside the box, which is what I hope you do from this piece of content, is start recording the calls that you're doing and take notes on them because that becomes the content that you can then post later as case studies. So I exhibit A, I helped the client. Uh, they came in with a web page that wasn't converting. 
After three consultations, consultations with us, this is what we did. We fixed this headline, we changed this color, and we fixed this call to action, the CTA, and now they're getting about five to 10 leads a day, right? And then run someone through that framework. And so when you post that, you've now done, again, a twofer. You've gained the client on the front end, and now you're gaining more clients on the back end because they're thinking, man, this person knows what the heck they're doing. So with that, whenever you are putting out content or whenever you are putting out your service, always remember this. People want three core things, speed, convenience, and certainty. That's ultimately what they're going to pay, pay for when they're paying for a service is they want to get it quickly. They don't want to be hands-on and involved with the service unless you absolutely need them just to make sure that, you know, hey, this is the color that you want. Hey, this is when it's going to go live, like little updates, but they don't want to be doing the work for you. Hence is why they pay you a lot of money. And then number three is they want certainty, meaning they actually want to know that you can do the job. And then lastly, which is more of a pro tip, is you don't need to run ads to get more clients. Um, I have built a seven-figure run rate with the business that we currently have right now, the Inside Inner Circle. And before we even threw a dollar into ads, we were well over 700K in cash collected, not revenue, in cash collected. And so what that means is we did a really good job of building up of building out content that was already attracting people. And then number two is we did a really good job of taking care of our clients that would then go out and tell other people about what we were doing. And so is and again, full transparency is creating content a little grueling sometimes in terms of how long it takes for it to actually start turning the wheel and you start getting clients. Yes. So I don't want you to I don't want you to go into this process with the false expectation that as soon as you start posting content, the cash register is going to start to ring. It is a long term game. And so I kind of played it backwards. Most most of uh, what we call um, content creators or. The other word I'm looking for is digital marketers is the actual word that I'm looking for. Digital marketers is they typically start off in the ad space and then they try to navigate the world of, of, uh, of warm or organic. And I often see that it doesn't always translate, but I have seen when somebody gets good at organic, it naturally translates into ads because it's already what you're doing. And so if there's one last thing that you can take from this is get really good at creating content, written, spoken, video, art content is content the faster you can get that out there and you can start building up that skill set when you decide to transition into ads it's also going to help out your ads in, in terms in terms of cost because i'm seeing this now in real time again i'm only running i've only been running ads now we're we're going up on like month two and a half so guys like i am brand new to this right i can tell you a thing or two about organic content because this is how we built it out but in terms of ads just like time stamp this september 2023 i'm brand spanking new at running ads so I'm probably the worst guy to ask on this, but what I can say is that when some of these people are jumping on calls with us, we're seeing that they saw an ad from us and then they said, I actually looked you guys up and I saw that Irv has a YouTube channel. He's been doing content for over three years now. He has Instagram, he has TikTok, like he's showing up every day. And so that actually helped us book a call with you versus a couple of other people in the same space because they just saw an ad, but there was really nothing on the back end of it. So see that also as a big building block for uh, for the leads that you put out. And it's ultimately going to be a bigger magnet for the lead magnet that you put out. Right. So it's like a little magnet and you got a bigger magnet behind it, which is your brand. So, again, this is how you go from zero to 250. Don't overcomplicate it. The main thing is get more reps in in terms of giving stuff away for free. If you can, if not, do it at break even. And then just continue to ask your client, your friend, your supporter, what sucked about it. Swallow your pride. It's going to suck at first. Swallow your pride. Go back, fix it, make it faster, make it cleaner, make it tighter, um, make it uh, easier to go through, easier to consume, whatever your service is, and then start charging and then slowly start scaling up the amount of money that you are charging for it. If you found value in this content, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Don't forget that we don't run any ads on here. So... Any piece of content that you see, it's literally just us giving it away for you for free. The only thing that I ask is that if you did find value in it, continue, uh, consider sharing it with someone and consider hitting that subscribe button down below, leaving us a five star review. But other than that, I appreciate you guys checking us out. Until next time, everyone, I will see you in the next episode. Later.